uh, glad for every glad everyone is here to be able for our Brown Deer School Board meeting uh, held today, November Tuesday, November twenty third, twenty twenty one. Uh, I'd like to be able to call this meeting to order at 6.07 p.m. All right, verification of public notice. The meeting was publicly noticed. Uh, verification of a quorum. We have all seven members of our school board uh, here with us this evening. Approval of the agenda. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the agenda as presented, please? Dr. Beto, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. All right, thank you very much, Nicole. Motion has been made. Do we have a second? Dr. Beto, I'll second. Thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion before we move forward? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor with raise hand and or aye. Seven, okay. All right, motion carries unanimously, seven to zero. All right, and now we go on to our mission statement. Uh, together with our families and community, we will inspire students to be passionate learners, creative thinkers, and innovative leaders who enrich our world. All right, let's go on now to our item number two, our district communication. Dr. Kelsey Brown. Good evening, board members and our Brown Deer community. Tonight, we would like to, uh, for our showcase, we had uh, two amazing plays over the last two months, one in October and one in no November, one from our middle school team and one from our high school team. And both put on a tremendous performance. It's always appropriate to recognize our, our students and our staff members who are doing such amazing work. Um, even in the midst of the experience, uh, they are still rising to the occasion in spite of all of the other uncertainties that we've had to navigate um, for the last few year and a half or so. Um, our middle school play, which took place on October 28th, 29th, and 30th, entitled Storybook Reunion Murders, followed our most beloved storybook characters as they hosted their high school reunion with an unexpected visit from their rival school. I want to take a moment to recognize our students and staff who put in many, many, many after school hours. Our director, Ms. Alicia Kinder, along with Brown Deer alum, Ethan Hightower, Sandy Schmidt, who created costumes, and Cindy Bernard, who helped with set and props. 14 students participated, including seventh grader, seventh grader Shuhana Zong, who played dog, and Gregory Perry, who played the wolf, who are all on with us tonight. If Ms. Kinder is on, who I believe I did see her. Yep, there you are. Hey, Ms. Kinder. Um, would you please share a few experiences uh, experiences about the play uh, with our students. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I wear quite a few hats in the district. Uh, and for a couple of years, I've been assistant directing our shows, which predominantly feature our high school students, um, also choreograph our musicals. Um, and after Pajama Game, Mr. Schmitz and I kind of started putting our heads together. And we thought about, we have such great talent, such passionate kids in our middle school and they are more than happy to show up and be part of our musicals and be part of shows occasionally. But they get to be town person number three and they get to be a member of our chorus. And some of them are phenomenal dancers and get to dance, but they don't get to be the leads very often. So what a great opportunity if we're talking about growing our pro program, doing a children's show one. So hopefully we can get some very young ground deer audiences in the Mac um, and two giving our middle school students um, the opportunity to get to be center stage. Um, and one of the things we love, love, love about the musical is the through to see our high school kids through our younger students' eyes, they hang the sun and moon. Um, so by able to have two productions, um, Mr. Schmitz and I were both able to bring alumni as assistant directors on. So we missed out on a few shows with Victor um, Barnett and Ethan Hightire, so it was absolutely phenomenal to get to have them back. Ethan is actually in rehearsals right now for um, uh, his second professional production. Uh, he'll be doing uh, Langston Hughes's Black Nativity at the PAC coming up in just about two and a half weeks. So he said, uh, so he sent me a message to say um, it has been absolutely um, phenomenal experience to be on the other side uh, 
uh, of the stage and has surely taught me a lot about my future career. And I have appreciated working with each of the kids. Having these young people look up to me, another young person for guidance was a humbling experience. Um, they rose to every occasion, did absolutely phenomenal, were the best little community of people uh, a teacher could ask for. And quite a few of them are here today. So if you wanna hear from the voice of babes, uh, Ella's here, Evelyn's here, Jasmine's here, JoLynn's here. Y'all can go ahead and turn your cameras on if you want to. Uh, Shauna's here, Victor's here, they're all here. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Kinder. Students, does anyone want to say a few words? Okay, all right. <laughs> so let's move on to the thank you very much. <laughs> uh -uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Uh -uh, we got to put somebody got to get put on the spot. Somebody's got to say a line from the play. Somebody has got somebody has got to give me a line from the play. So you guys pick and choose. Otherwise, we're gonna stay on you guys until we come off. I, I so. think Victor Victor Isoka should say something. He was he was the prince, and he had some great lines. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> which line? Like any? Give us your best yeah. line. Give us give us the line that inspired you the most. Um, the line that inspired me the most. I don't even know. There's a lot. Pick one, Victor. Let's try, let's try one, Victor. twister of a line. <laughs> My tongue twister of a line. You want me to start right. off or whatever have you with just some tongue twister or whatever? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? All right, so now your turn. Let's go. Oh, um, well, <laughs> you see, um, it's been a while. So, um, okay. <laughs> I see a blank canvas with rife, endless possibilities full of togetherness and companionship. Surely one as beautiful as yourself could sense the sweet aroma of romance in the air. And then the witch says, Jasmine, oh, Jasmine, come on. Oh, Jasmine, that was let's go, Jazz. And then I say, oh, stop, tee -hee. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Yay, bravo. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Kinder, and thank you to our amazing students. If you had an opportunity to see the play in person, it was hilarious. It was super funny. So thank you all so much. And then for the high school, uh, we have uh, Mr. Schmitz who led this, uh, this piece. It was entitled Hit and Run. It was written by, well, let me back up for a moment. Uh, Mr. Schmitz came to me uh, last, uh, before the school year ended last year and asked if he could get together with a group of our Brown Deer alum to write their own um, play um, for, for this upcoming school year. So there, there were several Brown Deer alum um, who were a huge part of this success as it relates to hit and run. Uh, it took place the first weekend in November, November 5th, 6th and 7th. Students and staff met after school three days a week for rehearsals. I want to recognize several staff members. Again, Cindy Bernard, Kathy Anwar, Michael Penny, Marty Hagedorn, along with our tech crew and cast who pulled off a Brown Deer original play. So this was written by our Brown Deer students. Tonight we have ninth graders. I don't know if I saw Ms. Flowers, Alicia Flowers on. But I did see John Northern. John, I see you. Good evening. Um, if you feel comfortable, would you like to tell us a little bit about the play? So in the play, it's about a hit and run. So basically, these um, two people, I'm playing Max, uh, Alisa's playing Andrea. Uh, she's currently cheating on Max, and they're trying to get this relationship figured out. And they're apparently getting blamed on a hit and run. So that's what's going on in the story. Thank you, Mr. Northern. And thank you again to our amazing staff and students for uh, pulling off two plays, even in the midst of all the uncertainties. So thank you all so much. And we look forward to what is yet to come 
with the Aider here in the school district of Brown Deer. So thank you all so much. And let's give everyone a round, a virtual round of applause. Hey, but wait a minute now, we can't let them off the hook. You gotta give us one, you gotta give us a line from the play. All right, let me see. Okay, okay. Well, we are not friends. Friends don't do this to each other. And yo, what is Benno say? Oh, man. Uh, nice passion. <laughs> and I just want to add, um, Sandy, forgive me for forgetting your name on this go round as well. So Sandy makes costumes for both the middle school play and the high school play. So that's a lot of sewing. So <laughs> thank you all so much. And that ends the district showcase. Thank you, everyone. And if you feel free to stay on with us, and if you choose to uh, get to get off, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. All right, next, let's go on to our district administrator's report, Dr. Brown. Thank you. Good evening again, board members. Just a few updates as it relates to uh, what is happening uh, at the district level. Um, we, a few, a few weeks ago, we had a, uh, we hosted a COVID testing site with Health, Health Connections. Um, parents who gave us permission to test their students um, took advantage of the, the testing site. We had 25 students who took advantage of it. And of the 25 students, uh, two students, we, we were able to find two students who um, tested positive and we were able to quarantine those, uh, call parents and have students um, quarantined right away. And so we will continue to move forward um, with the COVID testing site as it is being led by Ms. Sharonda Farrington uh, and Jody Schmeiska, our Buildings and Grounds Director in conjunction with Health Connections. Um, we also hosted, um, on November, can't remember the date, but I know it was on a Sunday, we hosted a brown deer drop-in session for individuals who are interested in coming to be part of a most amazing team, either as a teacher or educational assistant. Uh, we shared the, if we created our uh, infographic and shared the information on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, as a result of uh, the Facebook post, 25 other people shared the post and we were able to, uh, we received 2000 likes as a result of the post. So the word is getting out there. Um, and so on that day, we did have seven people who showed uh, for both uh, educational assistant or teacher positions. Um, and we are con continuing to move forward with that with the principals and Ms. Jackson as our HR manager. We are also hosting a second drop-in session next Tuesday um, from five to seven at the ASC. So we will continue to forge ahead um, with getting our vacancies uh, filled here in the, in the school district of Brown Deer. Um, in addition to that, our um, communication specialist, Courtney uh, Krieger has been diligent, diligently working on sending out um, newsletters to both our parents and um, internally here in the district. Um, as of today, we had um, 365 families who actually um, opened and reviewed the newsletter. And then internally, we had 136 staff who uh, looked at the newsletter internally. So we believe that is going well. I also had an opportunity to attend a professional learning community training with our assistant principals in Oshkosh last weekend, as we know we are leveraging that strategy to continue to provide um, high quality teaching and learning to our students and families. I also continue to engage um, in what is entitled pandemic calls as it relates to um, information around COVID-19 with area superintendents, um, also in conjunction with the North Shore Health Department and Ozarki Washington County uh, health, health Departments uh, as we continue to receive guidance from them. I've had an opportunity to vis visit buildings and be in classrooms and observe our teachers doing amazing work with our amazing students. Um, just a reminder, um, tomorrow is a half day as we go into the Thanksgiving break. Uh, so a half day tomorrow for all three buildings, elementary, middle, and high school, just a reminder there. I have also been uh, engaging with the career and technical education program, uh, along with our Build to Learn program. That's one of our partnerships to uh, plan for our industry advisory breakfast, which will, be, which will take place on December, Friday, December 3rd from 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 in our tech ed area. And uh, that's just a few updates uh, of many. Uh, around what's been happening in the school district. And I want to say um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone and please get some rest. And, and that ends my update. 
Any questions? I was going to say, any questions from the board for Dr. Kelsey Brown? Yes, Dr. Kelsey Brown. Is the um, career in tech ed virtual or is it in person? It's in person. Thank you for asking. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, question for you, Dr. Kelsey Brown. How did our open house uh, go for that Sunday? Um, that for the, uh, that's, I uh, spoke to that, uh, uh, the drop-in session you're referring to? Yes. For interviews? Yes. Um, we had uh, seven people who showed up uh, for the drop-in session on that Sunday, uh, and it was held for between the hours of one and four. And uh, there were a couple of leads that principals were able to uh, secure uh, for individuals to come and begin uh, working in, in our amazing school district. And, and session two will be on Tuesday uh, from five to seven at the ASC. All right. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else have any other questions for uh, Dr. Kelsey Brown? Yes, Ms. Peterson. Dr. Kelsey Brown, I was just curious, do you know when um, or has it been decided the next COVID testing site um, date? Uh, is jo Jody, is, Jody, do we have the next date for the testing site? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are not having any testing this week because of um, the holiday, but we will resume testing for our next um, full week that students are back in the buildings. So that'll be the first week of December. Okay, all right, great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions for Dr. Kelsey Brown? All right, hearing a scene none, uh, we'll do our principal update. Uh, Mr. Griffin, we'll leave it out for Mr. Griffin, please. Mr. Griffin. I know he was on here. Here we go. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> when we talk about staffing updates, uh, we are look, seeking to hire one or two special education educators uh, for our caseloads. Uh, we're looking at one or two potential long-term substitutes to come in for maternity leaves, and we're interviewing um, for about two to three additional educational assistants. Uh, we want to thank the district for having to drop in interview sessions and for all the supports that uh, Mr. Kleinmate, Dr. Brown, and Mr. Garrison, um, and Ms. Antendari have been provided, providing us so we can fill all of our um, roles that fit our schools so we can meet the needs of all of our kids. And when it comes to meeting updates, we're still um, moving forward with our uh, PLC work within our school and within the district. Last week, Friday, uh, the district um, teams were allowed to present up on the school report card data, and we had some great conversations that started with that. Uh, the elementary school with this equity team began to analyze the uh, report card for the elementary building. And when we go about analyzing the uh, report card, we start off by what do we notice? We ask what are people wondering? And then we ask what are some potential reasons for uh, the results that we're currently getting? And I was very, very happy with our elementary conversations because uh, for the first time in my time in education, there was not a single moment where a student or family member was to blame for the results that we're currently getting. There's a lot of ownership of us as educators to say, what can, steps can we put in place? What professional development do we need to continue to engage in? How do we come together as teams to ensure that all students are learning at high levels? Um, when it comes to our SEL and culture, continuing, we still have incentive days um, that we're trying to utilize to keep all of our um, educators engaged and deal with the absenteeism rates that we were facing. And that has gotten better over time. And then as an entire staff, we're going to begin our book study of fostering res resilient learners, which is our PPG for the year. When it comes to academics, um, the entire district right now is focused on using the ASW tool. The ASW tool stands for analyzing student work. We're asking everyone to go through the first four steps. The first four steps would be identifying what you're teaching, um, and then setting up the criteria to know what is proficient, what is exceeding, what is developing, and what is it if what does it look like for our students that are um, progressing and need more support. But then looking at that information and sharing it with students and families to say we're not trying to take you leaps and bounds overnight, but take incremental steps to give proper feedback to ensure that we are progress monitoring the learning of all of our students. Uh, at the elementary, we're going through. Our, we're also adding in the plan, do study act process 
cycle of student learning. And then we had professional learning around social studies and math this past Friday out of professional learning, because those are the last two areas from a curriculum standpoint that we're trying to align with. Any, question, any questions for Mr. Griffin? I have one. Mr. Gr Mr. Griffin, I got the A for analyze. What was the S and the W? Analyzing student work. So the next piece in the analyzing student work tool, like after you give your pre-assessment, you begin to sort the students based on their level of achievement at that moment. And then you start asking the question, if a student is here, what are the next steps to get them to the next level? I'm sorry. Any other further questions for uh, Principal Griffin? All right. Thank you very much, sir, for that for that update. All right. Next will be uh, Ms. Pitchford. Good evening, everyone. For Brown Deer Middle School updates, um, staffing updates. Um, our needs include a special education teacher, a couple of SPED paras, one Spanish teacher, and a sixth grade math science teacher. Um, and um, once again, just like Mr. Um, Griffin said, thank you just to the district for just really supporting us and just trying to find candidates who are the right fit um, for, our, for our school and for our students. Meeting updates, the effectiveness project, we're continuing that piece as far as a teacher coaching and observation system. Um, instructional teams and PLCs are continuing to meet around the academic goals, standards, and assessments. And we're also continuing our bi-weekly meetings, uh, our SST grade level meetings to really provide more intentional supports, uh, social and emotional supports for students at each of the grade levels who may need, who may need that. Um, for SEL and culture, we are starting uh, next week, Voluntary Staff Book Club. We are going to be um, doing a book study on the book Culturize. Uh, thank you to my principal partner, um, Dennis for recommending this book. So we're excited about that. And the book is really focusing on how we can better create an environment where all learners are challenged, but they know we're doing it with care and with love. Um, so we're excited about starting that next week. SEL and restorative practices continue to be our priorities just to support the overall wellness of our entire team. We're excited about implementing just some PBIS incentives. Um, our first one, which is tomorrow, our staff student basketball game. It was attendance-based and we're super excited. We had 281 students um, meet the criteria to attend. And what was super encouraging was that even the students who maybe didn't quite make it, a lot of them either emailed me or came up to me and said, you know what? I didn't make it this time, but guess what? I'm gonna work that much harder because I am going to be in the next one. So that was really exciting to see students take ownership um, of them getting to class on time. Um, we have seen improvements in that area. So that was really great to see. We're looking at doing some type of winter formal, um, which would be our next um, activity. So any, any parents who are on the line, don't tell your students about that yet. Um, because we are going to hopefully um, Kind of craft that and let them know about that next week. So that'll be based upon attendance and positive behavior. Um, we're going to be implementing some catch and being good tickets that students can redeem for snacks and prizes. Um, a lot of times it's really easy to focus on the negatives. We really want to focus on all the awesome things that our middle school scholars are doing and demonstrating. And so we want to really celebrate those things that we're seeing happen. And so we're going to be um, just continuing to work that piece out, but that's something we'll be implementing. Um, our grade level meetings, we're going to be just pulling all of our grade level students together on Monday after, um, on Monday, this coming Monday after our break, and again after our winter break, we know after students are gone for a period of time, we just want to just remind them about the expectations and celebrate all the great things that are happening. And as far as academics, our content teams are continuing to work through our data tool um, that Dennis just explained. We're doing that same process, just making sure we're better aligning our standards with instructional practices and student needs. We are adding a winter fast bridge assessment for math and ELA. Um, and we kind of talked about this at the last meeting. We just wanna make sure we're checking in on our progress. We're not waiting until the spring to see what our students are, um, how our students are doing. We wanna make sure we're able to course correct as needed 
just to make sure we're providing as many supports as possible to make sure our students are, are growing academically. These are the updates for middle school. All right, does anyone have any uh, questions for Ms. Pitchford uh, in the uh, Brown Deer Middle School update? I see Mrs. Smith. Ms. Smith? Yes, hi. I, I'd just like to know a little bit more about the structure. I like the, of the effectiveness process. Are all what you know? Are all the teachers? Is this for new teachers? And then with the teacher coaching, just kind of the structure. Is it peer coaching, or do they get a mentor? How how is that? Yeah. So for all new teachers, they all do get a a mentor teacher. So that's something that the district has outlined at, from the beginning of the school year. So they do have mentor teachers. As far as the effectiveness project, um, teachers are they get more intensive support based upon the cycle that they're in. So it's a three-year cycle okay. process. And so the administration, so Mr. Henderson and myself, um, we are primary evaluators for the teachers um, and educational assistants in the building. So the effect of the effectiveness project is for those teachers that when they're up for evaluation in that school year? Everyone is a part of that process. They're just maybe at different cycles. So some people we, we may meet with on a more frequent basis during the school year and others, they may be meeting with like their peer colleagues more. Um, it just depends on the cycle that they're in. So okay. we have a summative year, um, then you have the two supporting years okay. and it just and rotates through a cycle. And I, and I know you guys are open to all of this, but if someone's, if it's not their cycle and if they request, you know, to be included in, you know, with the observation and the goal setting, then you just, you would have, is that Absolutely. fine? Okay. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for that. All right. Any other questions uh, for Ms. Pitchford? All right, thank you very much, Ms. Pitchford. Excellent job. All right, now let's go on to now, last but not least, Ms. Brown. Good evening, everyone. Um, so we are going to move to the high school updates. Um, I'm really excited. We have one special education teacher hired. Yay! Um, and we have our study hall paraprofessional hired, and both of them will be starting within the next week or so. So I'm very excited about that, but we still need one more special education teacher. So if anyone knows any special education teachers that are interested in working with high school students, um, we are more than interested in meeting them and welcome them, welcoming them to the Brown Deer High School family. Um, as far as meetings going in the building, we are still unpacking standards. Um, the English, Math, Science, and Social Studies Department we meet as a collective group um, during our morning professional learning time where we unpack standards together. We talk about the learning activities for those standards. We talk about what would the ACT standard look like in comparison to our state standard. Um, and then we also use the district ASW tool and we talk about how do we know after we taught something, are our students proficient? And then what level of proficiency are they demonstrating? So our teachers are working really hard um, together collectively, but also in their departments to complete that process. Um, we, I consistently every two weeks have meetings with our coaches um, to talk about what are they seeing in the classrooms? How are their teams doing with um, that standard work when we're not in our groups? Um, and what additional support do you think each department needs um, to continue moving our work forward? And we are also continuing with the EP process. Um, Erica and I have divided the teachers. So we each have a range of teachers that are year one, two, or three, and um, making sure that we both have teachers in each department so we can talk about a department holistically instead of one person just seeing the entire department. So we're really just trying to get a feel about um, the performance of all of our teachers and how we're going to be able to support them. For SEL tomorrow, uh, if you don't have anything to do, starting at around 10.15, the staff members will take on our high school students. Uh, pray that none of us get hurt or too badly embarrassed um, playing our skills, but we are going to have a basketball game and I asked the students to bring in a donation. 
So one thing that um, I've really been talking with the students, our theme is do small things with great love. So one of the small things that we're going to do is make a donation before we go in to see the game. And then all of those proceeds will be um, donated in the name of Brown Deer High School to Feed America or the Salvation Army. So tomorrow we are going to have a fun way to exit for our um, Thanksgiving break, but we also will leave with a nice basketball game to kind of keep the kids in a happy spirit, just in case they're not celebrating, they have something else to talk about for a few days. Um, we are- Brown. Yes. Can I just interrupt you for a moment? And, and Dr. Brown will be on the sidelines with pom-poms this time. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, I said, last time I messed up my knee and she messed up her foot, but I'm going to still go at it because I've been talking too much trash not to play in the game. So um, I'm definitely playing tomorrow. I hope I don't get hurt, um, but I'm definitely going to be on the court. But if you can join us as a cheerleader or um, you want to get in for a couple seconds, I'm willing to do all of that. So tomorrow is hopefully going to be a really good time. It'll be fun. Um, let's see. I just also want to say that I make an announcement to students, not every day, but every couple of days I check in with them to let them know how proud I am. So like if we've been working on something like cell phones and using cell phones appropriately, and I'll go around to classrooms and I'll kind of see um, how they're doing. And once I see like they're complying or they're really trying to support our cell phone policy, I acknowledge that I see them doing the great things, living up to our themes. Um, same thing with language. We were really conscious about we have awesome vocabularies and we can find other ways to express ourselves. So anytime I see kids really trying to do that, I just like praise them. So one of the SEL things that I'm doing to get them out there is they hear my voice and they see that I'm watching and, um, and I acknowledge their efforts. And I think that that has been really important to changing their behaviors. The last thing for academics is that we recently mailed home report cards. Um, I read all 560, I think nine of them, 67. Um, and the reason that I did that is because now when I see students, um, we have another um, talking piece to talk about. So if I saw your math grade and I know that you're supposed to be in math, but you're in the hallway talking about you need to go to the restroom, I'm like, no, <laughs> I saw your report card. You need to go back to class. We can do this later. Um, so it's just really um, always bringing the academic focus of what we're here to do. And since they know that I'm looking and that like, oh, she's taking an interest, she knows my grades. Um, I just think that they're more conscious about it. Like I say, have you talked to your teachers about this grade? Um, I know you can do better than this. So just really being able to let the students know that I'm looking at academics as well. So at the high school, we're making small steps in the right direction. Um, I think I heard one teacher say, the kids ask about their grades more this year. And so I'm happy that um, I'm able to help them foster um, that desire to know where they're performing and really stand focused about their education. So in a nutshell, that's the high school. And does anyone have any questions about the high school? Questions, board members for the high school. Great. All right. Well, we're going to be looking forward to hearing. Uh, uh, can we get the, uh, the the update of the uh, the score of the uh, staff student basketball game? Can we get uh, some highlights or whatever have you? Can you know whatever? Can we get it on the uh, Brown Deer web page? Something. Um, we only putting that score out there. If we not too embarrassing, but <laughs> no, you would definitely hear the score. Um, we are going to represent tomorrow, so. Yes, the score will be on the web page, on our page, any page, Facebook. So crossing my fingers, I hope we win because I have been talking trash all week. So we better win. <laughs> all right. So if you start losing, if we start hearing you done fake the injury and stuff, we're going to call you out. <laughs> I might fake an injury. <laughs> all right, then. Thank you very much, Ms. Brown. Uh, excellent job. All right, now the next part that we go to is we get ready to go to our um, um, 
public comments. And as, as everyone already knows, if you have a, a, in the public, if you have a comment, please put it in our chat. Ms. Lisa Zelensky is going to be monitoring the chat in order to be able to share whatever your comment may be. Now, remember, this is public comments, not public questions. So, again, if you have a comment, uh, the public, you have a comment, please put it in our chat. And uh, we will be able to, uh, we'll monitor that and be able to get your comments uh, put out there. And we will give you one minute to be able to do that. Um, and again, like I said, for Mr. Zelensky, but then also we are going to have another part for public comment when we get down to our public hearing and board resolution for the uh, calculation of parent transportation contracts. So that will be an opportunity for public comments as well too uh, during that section uh, of our agenda. So Ms. Zelensky, any comments from the public as of yet? Uh, nothing from the public, but Dr. Beadle, um, I have an announcement to make that I will not be seeking re-election in next April's um, election. It's been a pleasure and an honor to serve the village of Brown Deer through these past 10 years. Um, and I've met a lot of wonderful people in the community who I wouldn't have otherwise met. And I wish the new board and administration the best in the future. Um, okay, well, thank you, Lisa. Let's give Ms. 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 Linsky a round of applause, even though she's gonna be with us now still for another four, five months. Yeah, so I'll well, be here till April. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So again, with that being said, thank you, know, Lisa. Uh, I've actually served with you now for the, like the last five years, and thank you so much for that service, your insight, uh, man, your your eye for detail, and excellent note taking uh, will will definitely surely be missed. And thank you so much for everything that you've done, and we will definitely be doing something uh, for you before your last meeting. And uh, not really, necessary. I know it may not be necessary, but you know what? We would be doing a disservice to individuals that have given so much of themselves uh, to the district to be able to help us get where we are. So, again, thank you so much, Lisa. All right. Any public comments in our chat? No, nothing's come in. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward to our consent agenda. All right. Would someone like to make a move, make a motion to approve the minutes in our vouchers? So Dr. Beadle, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda, including the minutes of the October 12th, 2021 special board meeting, the minutes of the October 26th, 2021 regular board meeting, and the schedule of voucher payments via ACH and wire transfers in the amount of $956,000. In the general checking account and the food service account, including funds 10, 21, 27, 39, 47, 49, 50, 72, and 80. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Ashley. A motion has been made. Do we have a second, please? Dr. Beadle, I'll second the motion. Thank you very much, uh, Nicole. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor with raise hand and or aye. All right, motion carries unanimously, seven to zero. All right, now let's go on to our item number five, items for discussion, consideration and possible board action. Uh, for number A, our public hearing, uh, Mr. Klimek. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Um, the first item here is a, uh, a, a mini public hearing um, discussing a, a request for a waiver from DPI. As with um, all of the mandates and requirements of DPI, if a school district and a school board uh, wishes to seek a waiver, they have to um, uh, operate this way where they present the resolution of what they're uh, asking to do, why they're asking to do it, and then allow the public an opportunity to um, comment on it before uh, we actually vote on it or before the board actually votes on it. So tonight, um, uh, the administration is asking uh, that the board would approve a waiver request for parent transportation contract payments. And for those who are unfamiliar, um, uh, as part of the, the transportation of the district, the, um, we are required to uh, either transport uh, students who attend private schools within our area or um, compensate parents uh, who do so. So 
in general, we have, uh, we have used the, the formula where we have taken the previous year's per pupil cost, and that has been the basis for what those contracts are. Um, last year, of course, in, in the middle of the experience, uh, we had, a, we had um, a situation where we didn't have kids here every day. Uh, we, didn't, we did run the same number of routes uh, in order to uh, maintain social distancing and, and um, have enough space on the buses, uh, but we also saw a significant drop in ridership. So when you keep your costs relatively the same, but significantly um, uh, have fewer uh, students riding the bus, your per pupil costs uh, go up considerably. And so, as I noted in the executive summary, uh, in 2019 or 2020, excuse me, in 2019-20, the cost was $364.21. Uh, the numbers last year, based on our changes, um, uh, jumps up to $895.85. Um, so this is obviously an aberration in our historical um, uh, rates that we've had for that. So instead of um, using those rates this year, we are requesting that um, uh, the DPI uh, waives the calculation formula and allows us to use the numbers from 2019-20 uh, for the 21-22 school year. Are there any questions from the board? And then of course, uh, Dr. Beadle uh, can open up the floor in case there are any questions from the public. All right, board members, any questions for Mr. Klimek in relationship uh, uh, to the wave, transportation waiver? So I have a question. Um, I know that the COVID era started at the end, towards the end of the 2019-20 school year. So how were those numbers different from the previous year? We actually take three census um, counts during the school year for transportation. And so the first one is usually in October, then there's one in February, and then there's one in April or May. And all a child has to do is ride the bus during one of those periods to count. So we really were only impacted at the end of that school year. And then again, um, uh, we did have a slight reduction in cost because we were in that, uh, if you remember the negotiation with the uh, right way where the, the cost did drop for those last two months of the school year. Um, but those numbers are basically in line with what we've seen before. It's always been in that 350 to $400 range. Um, it, it, it shifts a little bit, but that's certainly more in line than than the nearly $900 we were looking at for our per pupil cost last year. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Klimek uh, before we open this up for public comment? All right, thank you. All right, now, any, uh, Ms. Zielinski, have we have anything in the chat uh, from public comments uh, from the public in relationship to the transportation okay. waiver? Uh, no, Dr. Beadle, we haven't. All right, let's give it another 30 seconds. Okay, there's All right, nothing. Uh, nothing. All right, well, thank you. We'll get ready to, all right, would someone like to make a motion? Dr. Beto, I'd like to make a motion to request a waiver of the calculation for parent transportation contract payments under Wisconsin State Statute 121.553 due to the temporary fluctuation in the district's transportation costs and enrollment related to the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. A motion has been made. Uh, do we have a second? I was second. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Is that Ms. Robinson? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. The motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none. All in favor with raise hand and or aye. All right, thank you. Motion carries unanimously, 720. All right, let's go on thank to you. item B, Mr. Klimek. Uh, then for our business office update, we have a few items. First, our um, employment summary and the, uh, the new hires. We have two new hires to present to you tonight. Um, Riley Anderson uh, has been hired as an elementary school teacher and Caitlin Leggett has been hired as a high school special education teacher. All right. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve the hires of Anderson and Leggett? 
Dr. Beto, I'd like to make a motion to approve the hiring of Riley Anderson as an elementary school teacher and Caitlin Leggett as a high school special education teacher for the 2021-22 school year. Thank you very much, Ms. Zick. A motion has been made. Do we have a second? I will second, Dr. Beto. Thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all would raise hand and or I. All right, motion carries unanimously. We'd like to be able to welcome Ms. Anderson, well, Riley Anderson, uh, am, am I correct as a uh, female? Uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Riley Anderson and Ms. Caitlin uh, Leggett as new employees for the District of Brown Deer. Thank you so much for uh, being willing to uh, be able to join our team and add value to the education of all of our students. So thank you very much. All right, Mr. Klimek, let's go on to uh, number two, resignations. Yes, um, we, as the principals alluded, we do have a couple additional resignations, but tonight, um, uh, due to the liquidated damages issues, I'm just gonna bring the one to you tonight, which is uh, Brenda Arnett, who has been serving as our district um, data and assessment coordinator. Uh, and she uh, has will be resigning as of the end of this week or effectively tomorrow. All right. Um, would someone like to make a motion to approve the resignation? Uh, yes, Dr. Beadle, this is Lisa. I make okay. a motion to approve the resignation of Brenda Arnett as a district assessment coordinator, effective November 26, 2021. All right, a motion has been made. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion, Dr. Beadle. Thank you very much, Ms. Ashley. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Yes, Dr. Beadle, I'd like to say uh, just real quick, thank you, thank, of course, Mrs. Arnett for her leadership over the many years here in the Brown Deer School District. She has helped us out in many different areas as pertains to her job description. Um, when I came in personally, she has assisted me in many different areas. And so I just wanted to say thank you um, to her leadership. She is now, of course, taking a different position as a director of uh, business services in a different school district, but she's helped me with the mentoring, coaching um, handbook, PL agendas, assessment calendars, report card, data, math and science folders. She's done a lot. And so again, thank her so much for her years of service here. And of course, to assisting me in the Department of Teaching and Learning as well. So thank you, Brenda Arnett, for your um, time here in Brown Deer. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Garrison. Any other comments? Yes, Dr. Vito, I'd like to add to Mr. Garrison's sentiments. Um, when I came to Brown Deer as the Director of Teaching and Learning, um, Ms. Arnett was here a year, she got here a year before I did. Um, and in addition to what Mr. Garrison has just mentioned as it relates to Brenda, she's a very unique individual and in that no matter what we've asked her to do, um, she's been able to rise to the occasion. Um, she's taught marketing. She has led DECA. Um, not, uh, she's been the district assessment coordinator. She's been a math coach. She's stepped into the science role. Um, Kara is smiling there. I think I might be missing a, a, few, a few things. Um, as it relates to what Brenda has done, but I wish her all the best as a business manager in her new district. It is a position that she um, aspired to um, and had a passion for, and so someone has selected her uh, to serve as their business manager, and she'll be a, she'll she'll be a great addition to her new school district. So thank you, Brenda, uh, and we wish you all the best. All right, thank you much, Dr. Kelsey Brown. Any other comments before we go to vote? All right, uh, all in favor of the resignation of Ms. Arnett with raise hand and or aye. All right, motion carries unanimously seven to zero. Uh, I, I think it goes without saying that we uh, really uh, hate to have a, a loss like this for Ms. Arnett that has done such wonderful things with all of our data and working with our students and our staff over the last several years. Thank you very much. As we always say, once a Falcon, always a Falcon, and we wish you the best of luck in the new school district and in your new role. All right, let's go on to item uh, 5B3. Mr. Klemick. Yes, we have a couple of um, unique leave of absence requests this evening that we need to uh, have the board approve. Um, we, have, uh, we, have couple, we have actually several maternity leaves occurring in the next few months, but uh, this first one um, involves one of our teachers who um, is new to the district, but so has not accumulated enough time for to qualify for FMLA. 
So uh, the board would need to approve the job protection provision by allowing her the, the 12 weeks to, um, to uh, uh, have the baby and, and have the bonding time uh, for that. So uh, that's the first one that I bring in front of you. She does have her letter uh, we posted for um, the request and the dates involved. All right, uh, would someone like to be able to make a motion? I will make a motion to approve the leave of absence request for Lauren Moore beginning January 3rd, 2022 to March 21st, 2022. All right, motion has been made. Is there a second? Dr. Bitter, I'll second the motion. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Dick. All right, motion has been made and seconded. Any conversation before we vote? All right, hearing and seeing none. All in favor with raise hand and or aye. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Nancy, seven to zero for the uh, leave of absence for Lauren Moore. All right, next, Mr. Clemmick. Okay, and then our second leave request um, is for another teacher. Uh, she uh, is actually looking to take her FMLA time and then extend her leave through the rest of the school year. Um, so again, that would be an extension past what would be would be mandated and would be up to board approval. She does have the support of um, Mr. Griffin. The the she's at the elementary school um, and has a, has his support to have this extended leave. And so um, the administration would be recommending that the board would approve it. All right. Would someone like to be able to make a motion to approve? I would like to make a motion to approve the leave of absence request for Brittany. Rizaj beginning January 3rd, 2022 through the end of the 21-22 school year. All right, motion has been made. Do we have a second? I will second Dr. Beatle. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all, with, all in favor with raise hand and or aye. All right, motion carries unanimously seven to zero, and we approve the request for Brittany Rosh. All right, um, so for both of our uh, teachers that are, need this leave of absence, we wish you the best, uh, best of health and, and best of all of those different things with that and the welcome additions to uh, your families as well as to ours. All right, let's move on to uh item number three approve oh i'm sorry uh yeah I, item number four i'm sorry october 2021 treasurer's report mr clinic yes this is just an informational item just we're now that we are into the budget year and we have the budget input into skyward and you're starting to see some numbers uh, especially on the revenue side um we're, we'll start to present this on an annual basis again so this is our year-to-date information as of october 31st um, again organized by um, object, so you, you're seeing uh, the, the various items comparing the uh, activity from 2020, 2021 uh, to what we budgeted thus far this year. And again, it's just a reminder that because the way expenses and revenues are, they're not um, evenly distributed throughout the year, it's always good to look at uh, the same line item from year to year to see how we're doing comparatively. So I don't, uh, there was nothing that stood out to me specifically um, in it. We did have one Thing we're going to fix just in a recoding issue of where something was placed. Um, if you look under fund 10 item 480 and 482, um, those are technology line items and you can see that line 480 uh, is at 152% but line 42 is at 40%. Uh, that was just the, the um, where we put the, um, the ECF uh, computer purchase that we did, the emergency connectivity fund. Um, it's in 480. It's going to get moved to 42, and so both lines will will seem uh, more normal to the budget. Um, otherwise, everything else at this point is is fairly expected, and we'll start to see revenue. Uh, our first large chunk of revenue comes in um, on December 6th when we get 40% uh, of our equalization aid. Okay. Uh, questions for Mr. Clemick, real quick. Uh, I do actually have a question in relationship to fund 27 expenses mm -hmm. or whatever, when we look at our total special education expenses uh, with uh, with us having actually some of these, some of those um, 
uh, openings and uh, vacancies in relationship to the teachers as well as the assistants. Uh, how are we how are we going to be looking in relationship to that fund 27 budget, Mr. Clemick? What is your projection in relationship to spending this down? Right. Well, some of it will be uh, we'll, we'll see a little bit because I don't know when we'll replace some some folks and whether we'll replace them with um, someone that's um, has a higher salary or higher uh, higher um, benefit package than what than what um, we had that replaced it. <clears throat> I will have you point out. I will note that if you go way to the bottom and you look at the fund 27 general expenses, um, even though we have a, a budget that's $400,000 more than we did last year, we're still we're right now underspending where we were at this point last year. And we know we underspent significantly last year as well. So um, I, I feel fairly positive, but it is, I I'd like to make sure once we have everyone staffed, uh, I'll feel a little more confident that I can say for sure that, you know, we know we're going to come under. I, I, I was hoping that we wouldn't be spending as much in Fund 27 as we had projected, but we were just basing it on the number of um, aids that we were seeking. And again, at this point, um, we'll, we'll probably have the vast majority of them for six months instead of nine. So there'll be, you know, there'll be some savings from a budgetary standpoint there as well. All right. Uh, thank you. Cause I just had some questions and concerns in relationship to that, especially when it came to our uh, special education uh, budget and kind of where we're at right now and some of those different needs. Uh, anyone else have any questions for Mr. Clemick in relationship to this uh, budget update? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Clemmick. All right, let's uh, move forward to um, item 5B5, uh, five, approval of the 2021-22 depositories. So this is an item that we traditionally do in June and it's something that didn't happen on my radar. And when I looked back, I noticed that we hadn't done it in a little while as a board. So this is something that just uh, to make the auditors happy, I wanna make sure that we do do it even though it's a little late. Um, but basically we established a number of accounts we and we haven't really changed anything uh, this year at all uh, but we do have a number of accounts that we do wire transfers in between in the course of daily business and so this is just the list so that the the board knows which accounts we do have or which accounts uh, we may use and we just uh, it, it's just good policy for the board to be aware of um, where the money is and what what the purposes of those funds are and we will i will continue to do this now in a more um, I'll, I'll have it set in my June calendar, so we'll approve it in June before the fiscal year starts, and that way um, it'll be more aligned with what the board policy says. But we are supposed to authorize this once a year. Oh, uh, I got um, okay. Um, would someone like to make a motion? Let's see. I'd like to make a motion to approve the district 2021 to 2022 public depositories as presented. Thank you very much, Ms. Smith. Uh, motion has been made. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? I guess my only question is, is Kevin, is there a reason why we have multiple accounts? Uh, rather, is it more advantageous for us to have multiple uh, banking institutions that we work with rather than just having one bank? Some of it is segregation of duties to some extent. I mean, it's nice to have um, uh, certain things in different places so that from a security standpoint, um, you know, it's not all sitting in one account somewhere. Um, as, as one example, PMA, which is where we have our, the WISC fund um, is actually, we, we really work with PMA. They happen to hold it at US Bank. So that's where, that's the company they choose. We do a lot of our banking with BMO directly. And so that's where um, a lot of the money is. And then uh, from a local standpoint, we have the Tri-City Bank where we have a lot of our student, we have the student accounts and the, the building accounts are there because it's obviously easy to, run over to that bank if you needed to, to do something. So that this is our general um, allotment of what we've used in the past. We can certainly look at it going forward, but I, I don't mind having say a separate account for payroll that you know then it doesn't it doesn't get or it doesn't mix in with other things. And so if there ever are security issues limited in what what can happen. So thank you very much. Any other questions before we vote? All right, hearing and seeing none, all in favor with raise hand and or aye. Ms. Robinson, I, I couldn't see, are you? Okay, I see it now on All right, thank you very much. Motion carries unanimously 720. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, let's go on to item number C, our NEOLA policy revisions and first reading. Dr. Kelsey Brown. 
Yes, thank you, Dr. Beadle. Uh, just wanted to sh uh, share with the board, uh, Ms. Ross sent an email to the board to clarify um, all of the questions that arose as a result of our first reading last time. <laughs> and so now we have a second first reading. <laughs> <laughs> and so hopefully we were able to bring clarity um, around your questions as we had a discussion with Steve Bloom, our new representative from Neola. Um, and so if the first reading is approved tonight, the second reading will be at the work session um, in December. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Kelsey Brown. So as we know, board members, uh, this is one of the most important uh, parts of, or, of our role as being school board members is the policies and the approval of those policies. Tonight, we have 53 policies, I believe, uh, that we are reviewing for this first read. Um, and there was follow-up because as a board, we did have questions in relationship to several of these uh, policies and we were updated by uh, Ms. Ross and Dr. Kelsey Brown. Uh, does anyone have any other questions in relationship to any of the policies and the way that they are written and or verbiage or how you are understanding the definition of those policies. Again, I know it was I know it was a lot. I know it was a lot to read. I know that we all kind of kind of went through this thing with a fine tooth comb. So I, I just, you know, again, this is one of those times, that, you know, uh, don't be don't be shy or if you do have a question or there was something any little thing that kind of grabbed your eye and made you, gave you pause or made you want to be like, huh, I really want to know, uh, please do so at, at this moment. Like I said before, this is one of the major roles of, of our position as board members, and it is all about policy, all right? So any policy that once we approve this, then this is kind of where we are, are, are set up to be able to move the district forward. So again, any other, any other questions, any other questions that you may have in any of the policies? Uh, any definition part, any understanding? So I just have one question and um, maybe it's self-explanatory, but it's related to uh, the policy 3170 um, substance abuse and it was deleted. And yeah, I'm wondering if there's substitute language or um, replacement language. Dr. Kelsey Brown, because uh, right here I'm looking at it. Yeah, it is PO3170 substance abuse. You're saying it's, uh, it was deleted? Um, let me. Looks like it was deleted. Yeah, according to that memo that is attached to our board packet, it's replaced by policy 3122 and policy 4122. Thank you for that clarification, Lisa. Sure. Yeah, that the. And maybe this is something that next time we have a giant packet, um, this this particular memo that was copied that we have at our desks was really helpful to explaining why these things were all changed. And that was online, but yeah. um, it was a little tricky finding it. Yeah, and then just to be able to read through, it said these policies should be deleted as content is outdated. It is already incorporated in the policy 3122.01 and policy 4122.01, again, as Ms. Linsky had previously had said. So I think that was uh, the reason for that, uh, yeah. for that deletion. Oh, that's pretty obvious right now. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, no, but again, though, this is one of those things to where if you, if, if, as a board member, if you don't get it or it's not there or you have a question, let's, let's have that discussion. I'll just say that that, um, finding this particular memo inside that tool is quite tricky. <laughs> it's not obvious where to find it. It, it was kind of buried, so. So what we can do is, um, I think it, we, so when we move to board doc, or when we move to Neola, um, to the board docs platform, I think what might be um, helpful is if we all engage in a training <laughs> around navigating board docs um, itself, every time changes are made to um, any of the policies that um, the document that Lisa is talking about is noted in the, um, I believe it's the draft session, draft section on the left side of the of the policies. Um, they have a it has a volume number there, but I think it would be helpful if, as those policies change if we um, engage in a training uh, with the entire board just to be able to navigate board docs. 
and then understand um, what that looks like every time these changes come down. Because they will be, um, sometimes it will be fewer board policies and then there are other occasions we're having a conversation with Bloom, Mr. Bloom. <laughs> um, and then we, we, you know, we just never know how many we're gonna have um, as it relates to the changes, but a training would be helpful, I think for you all to be able to, or for all of us to be able to navigate uh, the changes when they do arise, because the explanations are always there. I would also add if you, um, between the first and the second reading, if you have any questions, there's, there's still an opportunity to seek clarification in between first reading, between tonight and the second reading as well. So I just wanted to put that out there to the board uh, to know that you can either send an email to me and Donna or, or either one of us, and we can get the clarity clarification for you. And when is the Thank second you. meeting um, reading happening one more time? We're gonna do it at our work session, um, our next meeting uh, in the- uh, December. Second week of December. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, all right. So uh, with that being said, are there any other uh, policies that there are questions in relationship to? Actually, Dr. Beadle, I believe we have, just back to the dates to Ms. Peterson's question. If my memory serves me correct, our board meetings are back to back in December because of the um, the holiday. holiday. Mm -hmm. So wasn't the second, so wouldn't, wouldn't this mean to be the second? No, it's it would the be seven. the seventh. It would be the seventh. Okay. All right. So it's going to be the first and the, the first and the second. second. First, Tuesday, first Tuesday work session, second Tuesday board meeting, December okay. 7th and December 14th. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that clarification. Uh, any further questions? All right. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the first reading? So, so, Dr. Beadle, I'll make a motion to approve the first reading of the NEOLA recommended revisions to the bylaws policies as presented tonight. Thank you very much, Ms. Ashley. A motion has been made. Do we have a second? Dr. Beadle, I'll second. Thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. Motion is moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Dr. Kelsey Brown, I would like for you to, uh, I think that would be a, a great idea for us to, uh, to go be able to go through, uh, go through that training and maybe that's something that we will do during our board retreat. And maybe we could have like a session for a half hour or hour as part of our board session to be able to go over uh, policy. All right, sounds good. All right, any other, any other uh, questions uh, before we go to vote? Hearing say none, all in favor with raise hand and or aye. All right, motion carries unanimously seven to zero. All right, let's go on to our next item is item number of six, our board reports, our SWSA and legislative update of Ms. Ashley. Good evening. So my report is very brief. So I attended the November 9th um, SWSA um, meeting and just a few high level um, takeaways. Um, one includes um, the presentation that was given by our children's hospital um, staff or the children's hospital staff, Dr. Gusite and Dr. Kari regarding um, COVID updates. Um, we all know that there uh, continues to be a surge and thus there continues to be um, the need to continue with um, present mitigation uh, protocols regarding layering and the tiered approach for protection. And um, so they continue to, 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 to encourage that um, um, in terms of just keeping our schools safe. In terms of legislation, um, again, we talked about the infrastructure bill that uh, has gone to President Biden. Um, we dropped down to our local government in terms of the governor and Governor e Evers signing into law a number of um, pieces of legislation regarding dating, uh, data reporting and transparency regarding um, a piece of legislation that requires school, schools to provide information uh, related to human growth and development. And then as most people um, know in Wisconsin, he vetoed the piece of legislation regarding reading readiness bill. 
And then finally, for the next eight to, um, I believe, 10 months, um, SWSA is going to focus um, a lot of their energy and time around um, four, I think, four um, topics, fiscal um, impact, um, the educator pipeline issue that we are all experiencing, uh, mental health and early learning. And finally, the next board meeting is, um, or the next meeting is December 7th, and that's at 7.15 a.m. And that concludes the SWSA report. Oh, thank you very much, Ms. Ashley. All right, let's go on to B, our YSAB report. So this report is really short, um, but the most notable, I think, is the um, um, WASAB has withdrawn participation from the National School Board Association. Many of you got that notification via email. And basically their withdrawal, um, their withdrawal was based on uh, recent events and other kind of ongoing um, issues and concerns that we really don't really know. Um, and then secondly, the full convention agenda is now, now online. So if um, folks are interested in seeing um, some of the wonderful topics that are going to be rolled out um, in January. Um, you can go online to get that information. And that's about it in terms of uh, the WASAB report. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the nice update. Let's go on to item C, our Education Foundation report, and Ms. Robinson. Um, not too much going on this month. Um, one thing I'll mention is that the foundation approved donating, uh, making a $500 donation to the Brown Deer Library to replenish uh, their supply of books for their books before kindergarten program. Um, so that was something that we did approve for this month. Uh, but other than that, just regular ongoing activities, uh, preparing for scholarships and fundraising and things of that sort. Thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. And last but not least, our Park and Rec uh, Recreation Report, um, Anita. Um, hi, a very quick report as well. Um, just a really short meeting that um, was held the first Tuesday in November. Um, in that meeting, we approved the park permit fees as well as the pond admission and men uh, membership fees. Um, there's a slight increase in those fees, um, but as we looked back over the many years, on average, there hadn't been a change in any of the fees over the last seven, eight, even nine years in some instances. Um, the increase was not very large at all, and so we don't foresee any type of problems with the increase. Um, and that was about it. Very quick, short meeting. and. Um, directly related to the increase in the approval of the fees. Our next meeting will be held December 7th as well. It seems like December 7th, the day that will live in infamy, uh, yeah. according to uh, <laughs> US history. Uh, right. same, it seems as though, I don't know, I always remember that my, my, my middle school uh, teacher was really on top of that or whatever, and I always make me remember that one. So it seems as though we have a couple of our uh, meeting on December 7th, the same time that we have our school board meeting, there are a bunch of committee meetings going on as well too and stuff. So if you can figure out a way to board members to be able to get the information uh, back from those meetings or whatever to be able to share with us on our the December 14th meeting, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, let's go on now to our uh, item number seven, our board planning calendar. Uh, November 25th through 26th is our uh, Thanksgiving holiday, so there is no school. Um, December 7th is a special board meeting uh, here at 6 p.m. December 10th is professional learning day, so there's no school. December 14th is our regular board meeting here in the uh, middle school commons area at 6 p.m. And December 20th through the 31st, there's winter break, so there's no school, so there will be no board meetings uh, for us after the 14th of December until we come back into January. All right, with that being said, um, we seems as though we've covered a lot. Uh, before we go to make a motion for the adjournment, I'd just like to thank everybody for taking time out this evening to be able to uh, be with us and go over the important issues uh, for the Brown Deer School District, all of the different updates. I really, really, really am proud of our students and, and being able to uh, 
go off the cuff and be able to re- go back and recite some of the things for the play. I really put them on the spot. Uh, that just means that the excellent work that, that they're doing and the, and the teachers that actually help them be able to do that. And for everybody, for Thanksgiving, I always tell everybody for Thanksgiving, eat too much, drink too much, laugh too much, love too much during that time. And, you know, we don't have to work. We don't have to watch our figures during that time. It's always it's always a good time. And, and there's always another time for another slice of sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie or whatever. Have you. So just remember that it, it, it'll be all right. It will be all right. So trust yes. me. So <laughs> just set your scales back about 10 pounds and then you'll be OK. All right. You know, mine's already there anyway. It didn't make any difference. <laughs> but excellent, excellent, excellent recommendation. So with that being said, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Dr. Beto, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Thank you very much, Ms. Peterson. Motion has been made. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Ashley. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor with raise hand and or aye. Oh, now this is one I always wonder, like, how do we get this one unanimously? <laughs> motion carries unanimously, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening and drive safe and God bless. I'll join Thank in you. That. You too. Happy Thanksgiving, all. Yes, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.